couple of times a year, people will ask me, Jared, what should I do to go see a meteor shower? Well, I finally decided, well, I tell people what to do when I can make a space pod about what they should do. And this is your space pod for December 18th, 2015. If you're planning a trip to go see a meteor shower, you're going to have to do a lot of because one of the main things you need to do is find extremely dark skies. And here in Southern California, we're very, very lucky. I've thought of a place that I would like to go to. That would be Joshua Tree National Park. It's out in the middle of the Mojave Desert and it is quite big. And there's also very little around it. It's extremely isolated, both from people and being isolated from people, that means it's also isolated from light. We'll go to Cottonwood Springs. That's a place I've gone to before, and it's got dark skies where I can actually see the Milky Way without the need for that. So let's put this away, somehow, start up the car, and now we're gonna get the heck out of here. So we're on our way out to Joshua Tree National Park, which is about three hours east of Los Angeles. And uh, it is a bit of a drive, but for a meteor shower, you wanna to go to the darkest skies possible. So in order to do that, you gotta get out of town. And here in Southern California, when you wanna get out of town, you go to Joshua Tree National Park. So through the magic of video editing, we'll show you a little bit of the drive out there, but then we'll also get straight to the campsite that we'll be at. So see you in like 30 seconds. <laughs> One of the things you need to take into consideration when going to view a meteor shower is that you might be heading out to an isolated place. In the case of Joshua Tree, it's, as I said before, extreme isolation. You literally have to bring everything with you, and in addition to that, it may not actually be easy to get where you need to go. And this is a photo I took during the peak of the meteor shower, which shows the perfect technique by which you should actually view the meteor shower. You don't need a telescope or binoculars or any type of fancy equipment. All you really need is a chair and maybe some warm clothes or a warm drink or whatever you may like, and the ability to look up to the sky. And that's what we did. And we were able to see about two to 300 Geminid meteors during the Geminid meteor shower. Really the most difficult part of seeing a meteor shower is actually getting to where you want to go to see the shower. But if you have the place, especially an extremely dark sky, it's highly worth it. And take a look at the multiple meteor showers that happen throughout the year. There's not just one that happens at a specific time, there's many that happen at a specific time. Although the noted ones, like the Perseids in the middle of August, the Leonids in the middle of November, and the Geminids in the middle of December, usually put on the most spectacular shows. Thanks for watching the Space Pod. I'm Jared Head. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us. And of course, we are continuing our Patreon campaign, now doing so monthly. So make sure to take a look at that, see our milestone goals, and help us reach some of the new heights that we'd like to with our Space Pods. So, until the next Space Pod, keep exploring.